Scruffy Church TV! <laughs> Welcome to Scruffy Church TV! My name is Philip, I'm the vicar here in Bath, which is where we are. And Lizzie, my wife, is operating the camera. She would love to be in Scruffy TV, but she can't be in Scruffy TV because she's not scruffy enough. So she's our glamourer operator and she is brilliant at that so Lizzie's here I'm here and you are here and it's wonderful to have this chance to have a service together a church service together called Scruffy Church TV and last week it was boiling hot remember we went outside it was great today it's a bit cold and cloudy and it might even rain so we're going to stay inside today and there are so many wonderful things in this service that we're going to enjoy together as you know we always start off with a shout out. Now we've had a few problems with our internet this week and I really think that a couple of messages that you've sent in have got lost and I'm really sorry about that. So when we have our shout outs, if you sent us something and you don't see it now, please, please write again. Send us your picture and your, uh, your email again and we will put it in next week. So I'm really sorry if that happens, but we did get some. So let's say a big hello shout out, Scruffy Church TV, to Alessia and Sebastian Pertile in Canberra, in Australia. <gasps> wonderful, look at those wonderful rainbows that they made from our Noah story a couple of weeks ago. Hello to you two, you are so welcome and it's wonderful to know that you watch all the way around the other side of the world in Australia. Now look at Annabelle and Lily and their wonderful fruit prayer tree from last week. They watch here in Bath with their parents, Neil and Michelle. And remember when we had that prayer tree, we put it in an upside down, uh, flower pot but look well they, they've got a brilliant idea for putting their tree in that's wonderful and Livy from Derby who watches with her grandparents has that lovely chalet at the bottom of her drive that she puts a different scene in every week last week it was a farm we have the story about a farm this week it's the teddy bears picnic look at that how amazing if we go down to the scruffy table today we'll find out what we're going to get <gasps> Because we need things for this, everybody takes a part in Scruffy Church TV, so we need some cardboard or some paper. We're going to uh, cut out uh, a foot a bit later, so make sure it's big enough for your foot. And we need some pens and pencils. And oh look, there's my pencil for this week, and it's a Bath Abbey pencil, everybody. Bath Abbey, a lovely place to visit, a wonderful place to worship. Bath Abbey here in Bath. So pen a pencil and some pens and some nice safe scissors to cut out with. And then we'll be able to, I'll show you what we're going to do with those a bit later on. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm just feeling a little bit stiff. So why don't we have a bit of a Scruffy Church TV warm-up, a bit like Joe Wicks in his PE with Joe, uh, especially if you're watching on a Sunday morning, which I know loads of you are. Let's stand up. Everybody stand up. And we're going to start by clapping our hands. Clap your hands, everybody. Everybody clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands to praise God. Clap your hands in the air, high in the air, let's see you. Clap your hands to praise God. Now everybody clap on the floor, clap on the floor, clap on the floor. Everybody clap on the floor to praise God. Everybody's jumping, jump up and down, jump up and down. Everybody's jumping to praise God. Now everybody jump and spin, jump and spin, jump and spin. Everybody jump and spin to praise God. Now everybody wobble your legs, wobble your legs, wobble your legs. Everybody wobble your legs to praise God. Now everybody shake your head, shake your head, shake your head. Everybody shake your head to praise God. Now everybody touch something blue. Okay, find something blue. Something blue. Find something blue, something blue. Everybody touch something blue to praise God. Now everybody's dancing, dancing, dancing. Everybody's dancing to praise God. 
Now everybody dance faster. Everybody dance faster to praise God. Now everybody jump and jump and jump and everybody jump again to praise God. Now everybody sit down. Fantastic. Well done. Sitting down, everybody. <gasps> Bet you're really, really glad of that sit down. All right. We are going to pray together now and ask God to be with us in our service. So listen to this sound. Loving God, we love Scruffy Church TV. Thank you that we can be together, even though we're in lots of different places, that you bring us together by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you are with us and you will help us to know what it means to love you and to walk with you in this wonderful life that we've been given. In Jesus' name, amen. We know what comes now, don't we? Hey, let's start straight away. Oh, I'm gonna hop. This is Scruffy Church TV because things go scruffily. There we go. Oh, right, let's have a look at those words. Here we go. Okay, everybody, let's hear you singing. Sometime on a Sunday or any day, I know where I'll be. Watching my computer or iPad to see Scruffy TV. It's Scruffy Scruffy Church. Woo! Scruffy Scruffy Church. Woo! Scruffy Scruffy Church. Woo! We're all family. I wonder what will we do this week? I'm sure it will be fun. Certainly will be with you and me and Jesus. So come on, everyone. Two, three. Oh, scruffy, scruffy church, woo! Scruffy, scruffy church, woo! Scruffy, scruffy church, woo! We're all family, who's here? It's you and you and me. You and you and me. You and you and me. We're all God's family. Who are we? We're God's family. What are we? We're God's family. Scruffy Church TV, everybody! With the scruffy words. How many times have we sing that, sang that? And I still get the words wrong sometimes, but that's okay. So we're thinking about footsteps today. And I'm going to take some footsteps all the way over to the scruffy table. And the last footstep I'm going to make is onto my piece of cloth. Now, don't you put your foot on the table. You can put yours on the floor. So get your piece of paper or your card and your pencil. It doesn't have to be a Bath Abbey pencil, but good if it is. And then you draw around your foot. Like I'm not going to take my shoe off because poor Glam Lizzie would faint with my smelly foot. So there we are. So there's my drawing. And then I'm going to take my nice safe scissors. You can get someone to help you if you like, and you cut around the shape of your foot. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we went to a festival called Greenbelt a few years ago, which is a wonderful Christian arts festival. And we all went to a service, a bit like Scruffy Church TV, but it was in a big tent. And it was called Footsteps of Jesus, the service. And we all had to draw around our feet like this. And then the person who was leading it said, now I want you to write, I want you to write on your foot, all the people who've helped you in your journey of life, in your journey of faith, all the people who've helped you to grow into the person you are. And I think the first, one of the first people I wrote down was Rosa Parks. She's one of my heroes. And Rosa Parks, was a woman. This is a picture of Rosa Parks and she lived in a place called Alabama in a in a town called Montgomery in Alabama. You can see there Alabama is that red state at the bottom of the United States there and she lived in Alabama about the time when your grandparents were the age that you are now I imagine something around there not too long ago and at the time in Alabama 
it wasn't very fair. There were black people and there were white people and there were some places that white people could go and other places where only black people could go and the black people weren't allowed in the best bits where the white people went and that wasn't fair. If you have a look at this sign, that's a swimming pool sign that was for white people only. And there were shops that black people weren't allowed to go to and there were jobs that only black people could do and white or white people uh, could do and black people weren't allowed to. There were schools that black people went to and that they weren't allowed to go to the same school as white people. And there were even churches that only white people were allowed to go to and only black people were allowed to go to. And the people who, who made all the rules in those days in Montgomery, they had black lives and they had white lives, but they thought the white lives were more important than the black lives. And the same was true on buses. Here's a picture of a bus at the time of Rosa Parks. And here's a picture of Rosa Parks sitting on that bus. Now I've kind of drawn a bus. Now that's a, that's a sort of looking down into the bus. And there we are. Now in the buses at the time, so that's the driver there, because they drive on that side in America. And they were yellow, the buses. So in the, at that time, there were seats at the front that were for white people. And all the seats at the back were for black people, like that. And there were more black people who used the buses than white people, so there were more seats for them. But that's how it were. That's how it was. And one day, Rosa Parks was coming home from work. She was really, really tired. And she got on the bus, like this, and she went there, and she sat in about that seat there. That's where she sat. And she was on her way home. And the bus got really, really full of people. So it was completely full. There were no seats left. And a white person got on the bus. And the white person had nowhere to sit down. So the driver asked Rosa Parks to stand up and give the white person her seat. And Rosa Parks decided that she'd had enough. She'd had enough with things not being fair. And she didn't give up her seat. She wouldn't. I mean, if you were on a bus and an older person came in or, or a mum with a baby, and you you'd might give up your seat for them. But she was asked to give it up because the driver thought that the white life mattered more than her black life. And she refused to give up. And you know what happened? The driver called the police and the police came and they arrested her and they put her in a cell ready to go on trial for breaking the law. And when the other black people in Montgomery heard this, they were so cross that they got together and they decided that they weren't going to ride on any buses until things were changed and they were fair. And they didn't go on a bus. And that was really hard. Some of them had to walk miles and miles to work. Other than had to go on the bikes. Other than had to share. If they had a car, they, had, they could share a car. But it was a whole year before things changed. And the reason they changed is because the bus companies relied on the black people using the bus to give them the money to run the bus company. And because they weren't using the, the buses, they were running out of money. And so things were changed. Things were changed. And what happened after that? was it became fair. There was no black and no white. Everything was the same. You could sit anywhere on the bus and that was just one law. And Rosa Parks went on in her life to change lots more things because she protested that things weren't fair. I love that story. I love that story of Rosa Parks, that true story. And I reckon that Jesus would have been sitting right next to her on that bus. I think Jesus would have been going, yes, Rosa, great decision. Because Jesus hated things that weren't fair as well. Do you remember that story we told about the Good Samaritan? How people didn't like Samaritans because they were from a different part of the country. And they didn't necessarily like the way they did things. But Jesus said, everybody, 
everybody is your neighbor. God wants us to love all people. If we don't love all people, then it's not fair. And God wants things to be fair. It's not fair. We're going to sing that song. I don't you remember, we sang this a few weeks ago. And it's a song where you don't need any words because I'm gonna teach you the chorus. If you don't know it already, the chorus goes like this. And it's a chance for a bit of shouting. It goes, it's not, and you go, it's not fair. Are you ready? Here we go. It's not, it's not fair. And again, it's not, it's not fair. People say, don't worry, but I really care that it's not, it's not fair. Late that night when there's something on the telly and you're feeling wide awake, you have to go to bed. Then next morning when you want to lie in, you have to get up and go to school instead. If you're allowed to, hooray! It's not, it's not fair. It's not, it's not fair. People say don't worry, but I really care that it's not, it's not fair. When when your brother and sister are playing a really fantastic game Why is it that when someone cries It's always you who gets the blame Oh, it's not, it's not fair It's not, it's not fair People say don't worry But I really care that it's not, it's not fair when it's time for dinner and you know that for pudding are two really nice ice creams Why is it that you're not allowed to have them until you finish off your greens or your beans in your dreams? It's not, it's not fair, it's not, it's not fair People say don't worry, but I really care that it's not, it's not fair when you and your friends are playing with your guinea pig called Jeremy wee, wee. Why is it that when it's your turn to hold him he always does a wee wee on your knee? It's not, it's not fair It's not, it's not fair People say don't worry But I really care that it's not, it's not fair Millions of people are starving and homeless and Jesus says that it's not fair. God's given us more than enough. It's up to us to care and share if we dare. It's not, it's not fair. It's not, it's not fair. People say to worry, but I really care that it's not, it's not fair. Shall I tell you? Shall I tell you another name? I wrote on that foot. Now this is a bit of a surprise because you'd expect me to write on that foot all the people that I really loved and who really loved me that really helped me. But I wrote a name on that foot, that piece of paper. I'm not going to write the real name. I'm just going to put a dot because I wrote the name really small. I just felt this name in my mind and I thought I'm going to have to write it down but I didn't really know why. And it was the name of a man who I'd found really, really hard. He'd done something really horrible to my mum. He'd, he'd made my mum really upset and I found it really hard to forgive him. And he was just like in my mind as someone that I couldn't forgive. And I thought, why am I writing this person's name on my foot? And it's because to Jesus, forgiving people is really important. He told a fantastic story about forgiveness. And I thought, <laughs> we'd have a couple of really good Scruffy Church TV friends to help us. Count down with me from three. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Hey! Hello, everybody. Yes, hello, everybody. Spiffy Doodles. It's me, Granddaddy. It's me, Aid, otherwise known as Visual Aid. Yeah, that's me. Hey! Uh, Philip, are we going to do a story? Uh, we certainly are. Yeah, Philip. Are there three people in the story? Yes, there are. <laughs> hey, fantastic. Oh, I, love it. Oh, I love it when there are three people in the story. Um, what are they? Well, there's a kind of a hero. That's me. I'm going to be the hero because I can do my best hero face. Ready? How noble. How heroic. Hey, I'm going to be the hero. Uh, yeah, well, OK. Uh, and um, uh, what's another character? Uh, well, there's another person who's um, a rich and powerful king. Well, um, I think, yes, that you should be the rich and powerful king, Philip. 
Me? Yes, I think it's about time you played a character that wasn't a baddie. Um, oh, well, are you sure? Of course I'm... Not job. <laughs> it's going to be a yeah, nice one, Grand. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah you are being the rich and powerful king because I have a rich and powerful face. Look. Ha <laughs> ha, brilliant. Uh, what does that make you? Well, um, <clears throat> that makes me the slimy baddie. Yeah, <laughs> the slimy baddie. <laughs> you should be really good at that, Philip. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Now, let's get some names. What should we call, what should we call the slimy baddie? Um, how about Kevin? Well, okay, the slimy baddie's called Kevin, uh, sorry if it called Kevin. Uh, and uh, what about the, the hero? Um, how about Eric? I've always wanted to be an Eric. Okay, so slimy Kevin, <laughs> that's me. And Eric, that's me. You're not in the first bit. Oh, okay, see you later. Once upon a time there was a king. The king was rich and powerful. And one day the king said, um, uh, slimy Kevin, my servant. <laughs> yes, your majesty. <laughs> um, I've been looking at my, um, accounts and I can tell that you owe me some money. Oh really your majesty? Oh I'm really sorry about that. Yes and I'd like you to pay me back. Of course your majesty. How much do I owe you? Um it's a million pounds. <laughs> a million pounds? A million pounds? Yes. I'm sorry they've sort of mounted up and now you owe me a a lot of money and I'd quite like it back right now or I'll throw you into jail. But a million pounds that will take me that will take me a hundred years to save, even longer. Well, it's your fault. Either pay me back or go to jail. Oh, Your Majesty, I'm really sorry. I'm, I don't know how it happened, but I'm really, really sorry. I'll do anything. I'll work extra hard. I'll even clean out the toilets. I'll do anything, Your Majesty. Please let me off. Please, please, please. <laughs> well, um, Kevin, I've given the matter a lot of thought. Yes. And I've decided. Yes. To let you off. Really? Yes. Your million pounds is written off. You're forgiven. Off you go. Nice and free. Oh, thank you very much, Your Majesty. <laughs> and Slimy Kevin was so happy, he was skipping along the corridor, when who should come along but Eric. Oh, <laughs> hello, Eric. <laughs> hello, Kevin. You look nice and happy. Oh, yes, well, I am, actually. And, and I'll tell you what would make me even happier. What's that? If you pay me the five pounds you owe me. Oh, oh yeah, I remember. Oh, I'm really sorry, I haven't got it at the moment. Can I pay you at the end of the week? No. What? No, I want it right now. What? But I haven't got it right now. If you don't give me that five pounds back, Eric, right now, I'm gonna throw you into jail, I'm gonna throw your wife into jail, I'm gonna throw your kids into jail, your dog, your cat, your chickens, and your guinea pigs. <gasps> but, 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 have you got it? No, into jail you go. Rah! And Eric was thrown into jail. What do you think of that? Is that fair? No. And the news got to the king. Oh, I am disgusted. I am king disgusted. Kevin! What is it, your majesty? How did you throw Eric into jail because he owed you a fiver? Me, your majesty. Throw Eric into jail because he owed me a fiver? No, 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 no. Yeah. So how could you do that? I forgave you a million pounds and you couldn't forgive him a fiver. Um, jailer, release Eric. Clink, clank, chum. Huh, thank you, Your Majesty. That's all right. Now, as for you, Kevin. Yes. Into jail! Ah! That is the story that Jesus told. And the people at the time, they would have said, it's a crazy plan. That king should never have forgiven the servant all of that money, but how unfair it was that the servant didn't forgive the other servant. And if you have a look at this, I think Jesus was saying, when we don't forgive people, it's like there's a barrier between us and God's love is for everyone. And if we don't forgive, we're showing that we don't love some people as much as we love others. And God says, when you forgive people, then the barriers come down and God's love can be for everybody there. And I reckon that the reason that I had to write that name on my foot, even though it was so small, was because that person had helped me to know how important it is 
to forgive. And children are usually brilliant at forgiving people. Grown-ups takes a bit more of an effort. In fact, it took me a couple of years to forgive that person, but I did in the end and I learned a lot from it. So now let's take our pens and we're going to go into our prayer room and we're going to pray together. So, oh, India's not here today. She may be here a bit later. Jesus says, when you pray, go into your room and close the door and pray to your father who is in secret. So take your foot that you've cut out and your pens and now this is your turn. So all I'd like you to do is to take your colours and just write down on your foot the people who have helped you, all the people who you love and who love you, who have helped you along the way. I'm going to do mine. You don't have to read mine. But you can do your own. There. Uh, who else? Um, let's think. Uh, just writing down my list here. All these people that have helped me. There we are. I'm sure there are loads more that I could write down, but those are the ones I'm going to write down for now. So have a look at those people. People who love you. The people who've shown you how to live the way Jesus wants us to. The people maybe that you want to be like. Just look at that list and just in your mind, just say thank you to God for all of these people who have helped us. And at this time, we think as well of all the people who are helping us at the moment. For the people in the NHS, for people who care, for people who are in schools helping us to learn at home or in schools. We pray for people like Rosa Parks who are trying to change things that aren't fair so that they are fair. And we had a great letter. Look at this lovely letter. This is from somebody called Johannes Otieno in Western Kenya. And we've got a friend called Ellie and she runs a charity called Challenge Africa that works with people in Kenya to help their lives to be better. And they built a school and Johannes is able to go to the school and have a lovely meal every day and he's learning a lot. And this is a letter that he sent to us to say thank you for supporting him. And we get so much from learning about his life as well. And just over there, that's the website for Challenge Africa if you want to have a look at that. And it's interesting, isn't it? I wonder how many people's feet that you would be on. How many people have you helped to live a good life for Jesus? So we're just going to focus on the candle for a bit. And we'll have a look at that lovely gold just behind it now. Uh, great. And just as you look at that candle, just imagine the people that you want to pray for at the moment. We're going to pray for Ellie and for Lorna, who are pregnant, and for Jean, who's having hospital treatment, and Oliver, who's in hospital, and for Sarah, who's got a really sore leg. But who are you praying for today? And let's pray as well for the people who are sad, who miss people at the moment who they can't see, their families and friends. And we pray for the people who have had friends or family die. We pray for the family of Pam Edgel, who was 101, she died. And Esme Jupp, who's a lovely woman, 
again she was very old and she died recently as well and for Steve Rogers in Bath here we pray for him and his family and we pray as well for our world that we may learn through this time of the coronavirus to treat our world more kindly and we thank you loving God for all of these people who've helped us on our journey, who've been our footsteps, who've been with us every step of the way. And we thank you that you are, you are with us. And we're going to finish by praying the Lord's Prayer together. Here we are. Let's say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Men. Guess what the first thing I'm going to do when we've finished Scruffy Church TV? I'm going to wash my hands. Look, got charcoal all over them. Let's go and sing our final song. Now, when I was thinking about what we should sing at the end of Scruffy Church, in fact, before we sing the last song, come and have a look at India because India, she's going through a bit of a cowboy phase at the moment. Look, she's got her lovely red neckerchief on there. <laughs> All right, India. Oh, right. Let's go and sing. Oh, yeah, that's her sign. Look, the Lone Dog Saloon. There we are. India has different phases where she's different things. She's a cowboy at the moment. So when I was thinking about what song should we sing to finish Scruffy Church TV, we've all, it's all been about footprints. It's all about taking steps through our lives. There was only one song that we could sing. One more step. Glam Lizzie, let's have a look at the words. And let's sing this together. One more step along the world I go. One more step along the world I go. From the old things to the new. Keep me travelling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new. Travelling along with you Round the corners of the world I turn More and more about the world I learn And of all the things I see I'll be looking at along with me And it's from the old we travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you One on the right Give me Courage when the world is rough Keep me loving though the world is tough Leap and sing in all I do Keep me travelling along with you And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you You are older than the world can be You are younger than the life Travelling along with you And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you <laughs> It's been great sharing Scruffy Church TV Big thanks to Lizzie for her brilliant camera work and a reminder to you that if you want to write to us at Scruffy Church TV, you can write to this address. Hopefully our internet will be fine this week. Scruffy at stephensbath.org.uk. And we read out every name and show every picture that's sent in to us. And we finish by praying together. Put your hand out to the screen like that. Feel the warmth of my hand into your hand. And then we take that warmth and we place it. Not on our microphones, but on our heart. Loving God, thank you that your love 
warms our hearts. Thank you that your love is for all people. Help us to love everyone because when we love people, we share your love with people so that all our lives matter and all our lives are warmed by your love. In Jesus' name. Great. Have a really good week. We'll see you next week on Scruffy Church TV. Scruffy, scruffy church. Woo! Scruffy, scruffy church.